Hello. We're on? Okay. okay, so good morning, everybody. So my name is Jojo, and I'm back. So it seems it, it's, uh, it's been quite a while since I've been here, and uh, I take this opportunity also to thank the, the Lighthouse family that I was able to be here, and I take this as a privilege, giving the message of God. And as we go through the series that we had, and uh, at the same time, uh, it is a great opportunity at the same time as a burden that I will be giving the message of which the message that is coming from God will be very heavy and I pray that the message today will be embedded in our hearts and our daily lives as well. Okay. So as we can see, we are running on the Trustworthy series. We are now on week six and I believe this will be the last uh, part of the series that we had. And uh, going through, I would like to open the, the message today in a prayer, as I know that I am I'm not a born speaker, but I believe that God will give us the, the knowledge, the wisdom to give the message for today. Uh, let us bow our heads for a short prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for the opportunity that you have given us. Thank you for the time that we have now. And as we go through the message that you will be giving us today, uh, use, my, use my lips, Lord, to convey the message that you had. My, my knowledge will not be enough, and I, I, I may have the, and I, I may bring uh, a, a, a message that will not be in line with your message. So we, I pray, Lord, that your message, your words will be coming out through, you, through your servants that you are, that is standing here today. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's still, uh, I'm still adjusting as uh, we are still online. So I need to face on the blank screen instead of facing the people that was usually within the church. Okay. So we, as I mentioned, we are now on a trustworthy series. Uh, I will be going back through, through, the, through the series that we had. So we, are, we have a total of six series. The first one was delivered, I think, I believe it was mis delivered by Pastor Jimmy. It's about God's faithfulness, which is talking about the covenant promise of God to his chosen people. God is faithful, and we are not. So, therefore, we did not value the covenant presented by God to us. And on the second uh, series we had, we'll talk about God's salvation. God's salvation is that the covenant of God has been extended to all. So God's sovereignty to all the people. And the third series was talking about the God's salvation. This is the uh, God's passion, which is the jealousy against idolatry. So this is actually being linked to the commandment number two in Exodus uh, 20, so it's part of the Ten Commandments, which uh, God is jealous against idolatry. Okay. Idolatry has been described during the discussion of this message to be something that is we put beyond God. And in this case, the hope and repentance, we can see that when we look at the worthlessness of the things we rely on instead of our God, and on uh, week four, we talk about uh, God's holiness. This is talking about that we cannot be in God's presence unless we are holy. The redemption can come only towards holiness was made possible from the promise of a Savior, which is Jesus Christ. On week five, we, have, we talk about God's spirit. So this was delivered by uh, Miss Jed. I think last week, is with, this is the helper for God's people to keep ourselves within the covenant with God. This is the Holy Spirit. The outcome was we have the righteousness, we have the peace, and we have justice. Today, I will be talking about God's remnant. So this will be part last of the series. So as we can see here, if you look at, if you look at the series uh, uh, grouping, it could be that from series 1 to series 3, this is talking about how God keeps his covenant. And on series 4 to 6, this is talking about 
the hope field responds to the promises of the faithfulness of God. So it is God and us. So I will be looking at the trustworthy series number six, which is God's remnant. We will be looking at the main verse, which is uh, mentioned in Isaiah 12, 1 to 6. But actually we will be going through, this is a long uh, chapters that we will be going through from chapter 7, and we will end up on chapter 12, which is Isaiah 12, 1 to 6. So this will be the focus of our uh, study for today. Now, uh, let me read through uh, on Isaiah uh, 12, 1 to 6. So I will be reading to you on uh, verse 1. In that day you will sing, I will praise you, O Lord. You were angry with me, but not anymore. Now you comfort me. On verse 2, See, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. With joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day, you will sing, Thank the Lord. Praise his name. Tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. Sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praise around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout his praise with joy, for great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you. Okay. So as we can see, looking at the verses that we have read today, we can see that these are songs of praise. It is a song of reconciliation, a thanksgiving. Now, but what are the people of Judah has to thank for? Wherein during this time, uh, Judah and Jerusalem and Israel was in at war. They are all the way, uh, all around them, they are facing wars, calamities after calamities, internal conflicts and everything, okay? So looking back at Isaiah 1 to 10, so if we go back to the, uh, to the chapters from Isaiah 1 to 10, all of this mainly talks about the coming judgment on Judah and, in, and, and Israel. Destruction which was brought by their unfaithfulness has to come, and some of them are already come. And only a remnant of the population will be able to sing the songs of praise and thanksgiving. Okay. So... What we will be talking about today is about the remnant. So, so when we look at the remnant, so it's in uh, uh, Hebrew, it means shear or ether, which is in, if we have to translate on the, uh, the words of Isaiah in Isaiah 10, 22, and Isaiah 11, 11 to 16, this is about, this is a small group of Israelites who will survive the invasion of the Assyrian army under Tiglat Pileser, so he is uh, a Syrian uh, king, which is taking uh, their seeds on uh, Israel, and eventually it's also their seeds in Judah. Okay, so the remnant is the remnant is promised that they will one day be brought back to the promised land by Yahweh. So this is the time that there's the people of Israel and Judah were still on their land, and as later on, I think in about another 40 years, they were brought to. Assyria on captivity. Okay. Now, let's look about what does remnant mean in our, in our term today. Okay. So, remnant, we can say this is about what, what, what is left or a spare or what was, what was left on whatever you had. Okay. So, uh, let me put this this way. So, because uh, I was raised as a farmer, my, my father was a farmer, so I have to Maybe I can relate this to you, what does remnant mean in our term today. So usually when you plant corn or something, so you have those, you plant there, and then when during the harvest, you will cut all the corns, or maybe some of the, the, the vegetables. Or maybe I can say, uh, say it's about uh, uh, peanuts, so when we say about peanuts. So we, you take all the peanuts, and then you, you had the harvest. You go back two weeks later, you will see again the sprout coming out. So those are 
the remnant that is that is taken from 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 the harvest actually so the remnants doesn't necessarily mean these are, they are the best of the best it only means that they are spared somebody decided that they will not be taken so usually those being taken are the strongest one so in in wars the, the, the first one to die are, are the, those on the front. So they are the, your best, best armies. They will be the first one to die. And what are the remnants that remains are those the weakest one. Those who has put their trust on somebody else. Okay. So that is the remnant. So the remnant is, has the ability to withstand the difficulties, the tests, trials of which others have not so this is not how strong they are it is how uh, how lenient or how, how can say how how they can uh, survive or how can they withstand so they are not opposing the they are opposing the forces but rather go with uh, develop the ability to uh, secure them or during the time of crisis okay so they are basically tested by fire and comes out victorious and they are purified. So those are the remnants that we can see from this way. Okay. Now looking at these remnants that we are talking about, so as I mentioned, we will be running through the book of Isaiah from chapter 7 to 12. So this is quite a long one, so I will try to make it short so I can do it in 15 minutes, I guess. So let us go in historical context of this. So here, I have listed up the lineage of the Davidic king from King David. So I cut from King David. I, I started with the seventh king from the line of David. So we have here is, we have King Jehoram. He is the seventh king. Uh, he reigns eight years, so somewhere in 849 to 842 B.C., the reference we can look at this is in Second Kings 8, and then we have King Ahaziah, and then there's one queen that has ruled Judah during the time. It was Queen Athaliah. So she ruled six years. So as I put this in red, because in the Bible says they are not a good king. They are not a good king. So, so I, I work in a company, so you, you, you say red, that is no good. Green is good. So... That's how it goes. Yellow, yeah. Yellow is uh, for sorting. So that is uh, doubt. You have doubt on that one. Okay. So we use green and red. Okay. So Jehoram, Ahasia, Atalia, they are, they are not a good king. So actually they are one of the worst king in Judah. Why? Because they are related to marriage with King Ahab. We know him. We know him because of Jezebel of Israel. Okay. So King Jehoram is, is, King Ahab's daughter is married to Jehoram. So King Ahasia, of course, is, his grandfather is King Ahab. Queen Athalia is also is related to the king of Israel. Okay. So, so everything is a disaster during that time. So they lost Edom. So they were killed by Jehu, and also Queen Atalia has been killed by the troops of Jehoiada. So, so Jehoiada is the one who took care of the next king, which is King Joash. King Joash was actually the son of King Ahaziah. During the time that Ahaziah was murdered, was killed by Jehu, uh, Queen Atalia decided to kill all the, the remnants, meaning the lineage of the of David's line, except that one of the son has been hidden by Queen Atalia's sister. If he, he was hidden in the in the temple, of which usually in the temple nobody can go in. So it, he was taken care of by Jehoiada. So he became king at the age of seven, and he was a good king. Okay. So he rebuilt the temple, and then his son Amasia gained back some territory from Edom. So this is the the time and then we have King Uzziah, King Jotham, and then we have King Ahas. Ahas, maybe in in Tagalog we call it Ahas, so it's a snake. So in English we call him Ahas. Okay. 
So I don't know in, in, in Hebrew how do we call him. And then we have King Hezekiah. Okay. So from King Uzziah up to King Hezekiah, this is the time where we have Isaiah. So Isaiah was, during this time, he was uh, talking to the king. He's giving the, the uh, messages, the, story, the, the prophecies, the, the advices to the king. So from King Joas to King Jotham, uh, Israel has, uh, Judah has experienced uh, some sort of relief because of the good king. That came. And then King Ahaz came. So, so what we can see here, even if you have a good father, it does not guarantee that you will become a good son. Okay. So it is still that the guarantee for you to become good is to be following what God says. Okay. So what happened to King Ahaz, he followed the example of the kings of Israel on the, the northern kingdom uh, kings of which if we have to look at the history of the kings of Israel, of the northern kingdom, they are not basically good. You can only count one or two of them, which follows the advice, which follows the, the, the messages of the prophets that they have been through. Okay. So King Ahaz did not follow what his ancestors did. In fact, he follows the detestable uh, practices of the kings of Israel that he even sacrificed his own son. So, and he joined and uh, formed an alliance with Assyria, formed an alliance with Assyria, and then copied the, 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 the way that they, uh, they, they worship their own God, they bring back the copies of the, of the the basin that they have to put the sacrifices in and they replace the, the basin on the temple in Jerusalem. So everything is not good during the time of King Ahaz. And we have the King Hezekiah. So we can see here there is a big change. So King Hezekiah has been uh, mentioned in the Bible as the best king even before and after the Davidic uh, lineage, dynasty. So this is the only king that was mentioned to be in the Bible that he is, he is the, uh, it mentions in uh, Second Kings 18 that he was, in fact the Bible states that there is no one like him even before and after his reign. So we have a change from King Ahaz and a big change, a big U-turn during King Hezekiah. Okay. So, Hezekiah has been able to witness from King Uzziah up to King Hezekiah at this time. And this is the time also, now we will be focusing mainly on the time of King Ahaz where the Isaiah 7 to 12 is during this time. Okay. So King Ahaz, as I mentioned, is diverted away from his predecessors or ancestors. Okay. And uh, he was so wicked that, as I mentioned, he even sacrificed his son and in a fire. And he formed an alliance with Assyria, which is, uh, we can say now, Assyria is the modern, northern Iraq. It's a border between modern, northern Iraq and southeastern Turkey in the current time against Syria and Israel. So we see he's, he's fighting, uh, trying to fight the, his bloodlines as well. So the nord northern kingdom, and he formed an alliance with other with other countries, with other kings, instead of building relationship with his relatives. Okay. And then finally, God's punishment towards Israel and Judah came through Assyria. So let us go on to the story of King Ahaz. So this, the reference for this will be on the second king, 16. So this is talking about his uh, achievements, what he did and what he did not did, do. So and also we will be talking about Isaiah 7, 12. Okay. Okay. So his predecessors followed God, as I mentioned. There are four generations of kings. He did not. Okay. His reign was plagued by the constant threat from Israel and Syria and a revolt from Edom. So as I mentioned, during the, uh, I think, uh, during the first, the time of uh, Uh, king Amaziah, the kingdom of Edom, has been recaptured, and now he lost this again. 
Okay? But during this time also, God was not silent during his reign. Isaiah was there, constantly giving him advices, warnings, uh, pr predictions of what will happen. Okay? The sad thing is that in spite of those constant reminders, through Isaiah, he still chooses to follow his own plan instead of relying on the faithfulness of God. So we can read this on Isaiah 7, 1 to 9, when uh, <coughs> there was a threat that Syria and uh, Israel is plotting an invasion to them. So Isaiah talked to him that don't, do not worry on this one. You have to rely on God. And eventually what he did is he called on the kings of Assyria, king of Assyria and he forged an alliance with them. So instead of following what was mentioned by God, what was uh, directed by God through Isaiah, he decided to do his own way. Okay? So finally, the fun, God's punishment to, towards Israel and Judah came through Assyria. So is, uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, was captured and uh, also Syria by, uh, by Assyrian king with the help of, uh, of the king of Judah. And eventually, also, it backfires. So the Assyrian king also captures Judah, meaning the, the kingdom of Judah and the capital of, Israel, of uh, Jerusalem. Okay. So Assyria's oppression to Judah ended only on the reign of King Hezekiah when the people has turned back to God. Okay. So this is actually the story of uh, King Ahaz. But we can see here, even on from, uh, I may not be able to go through to read to you from uh, Isaiah 7 to, to 10, but I'm trying to lay, lay out here what we, where we can find those uh, messages. Okay. So a promise of redemption has been promised by God on Isaiah 9, 1 to 5. So, so it is mentioned that nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. Okay. So this is also prophetic. Well, it mentions about the coming of Jesus Christ. Okay. So after the dark days of Assyrian conquest, a promise of a nation of people ruled by a perfect king is there. So it is on Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. So this is a very familiar verse to, for us. In, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Okay. So if there is, even we have, uh, during the time that they have this uh, all of the calamities around them, bad decisions from the government, there is still a promise of redemption to the people of God. But prior to this promise, a cleansing or a purification has to take place of which only the remnants will be able to return to the presence of God. So it is not the promise to all. It is, it, there has to be a cleansing wherein the goats has to be separated from the sheep. The wheat has to be separated from the chaff. Uh, chaff. Okay. 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 So where are, we, where are those uh, cleansing or purification to come from? It has to come, if we look at the, uh, moving forward on Isaiah 9, so from 9 to 8 up to uh, 10 to 4, what we will see here is that there's a, there should be a purification from what? Okay. First is from the pride and the arrogance of the people. Okay. So this is coming from the government, coming from the people in power up to the bottom. So pride is the biggest hindrance that the cleansing, the purification comes. So we cannot be clean unless we say yes. So if we are very prideful, we cannot... We cannot get any help. Even we, we, are, we know that we, are, we need help, but we will still say no. So this is the, this is the point uh, that is being mentioned here. Okay. So 
God still reveals his graciousness toward Israel and Judah despite the sins and failure to trust him. So the purification has to take on the form. So what are the purifications that comes here? It could be, uh, we can see here is coming from the natural or man-made disasters. These are the wars. So wars bring some purification. So if you are in trouble, usually you, you take out your pride, you take out your arrogance, you come to where you need your help. Okay. So this is, we can read this on Isaiah 9, 8 to 12, so I will not read this anymore. Uh, and then, from adulation of great men. So we rely mostly on the great men, whatever. So those who are, we understood that very uh, insightful, knowledgeable, so they know what to do. So usually this comes from, during this time, from the government, from the king, and from the leaders, from the, and unfortunately some of these comes from the church, from the faith itself. So it happens also in the Bible that it happens coming from the priests, and the leaders of the church. Okay. So instead of turning to God, they put the uh, trust on the lives of the people in power, both in the government and in religion. So we can see some parallels, as actually I think we can see some parallels that is happening now, that there will be, there is a parallel between all of these uh, cleansing during the time of Isaiah, and also we can see here today. Okay. Again, there will be also um, from self-concern instead of brotherly love. So we can see here that, that there will be a social anarchy. So everyone has their own opinion, has their own truth. So what is truth to me may not be truth to you. So there will be the moral compass has been destroyed. And if you don't agree with me, I cancel you. So I, I don't talk to you anymore. So it is a cancel culture. Cancel culture is already started even before, during the time of, uh, of Judah, in, in, this, in this time. So it is not new. It is not new. Okay. So the, the big difference here is that when you have a self-concern, so what is true to you may not be true to others. So this, the truth is becomes uh, relative. There's no absolute truth that was being uh, followed on, on during this time. Okay? And at the same time here, social injustice instead of genuine care. So if you look here at Isaiah 10, 1 to 4, it's talking about the, those unfair laws deprive the proof uh, of justice, deny the rights of the needy among the people. So this is the so social injustice that is happening. Oppression of the helpless. Okay. Can we see parallels in our time now? I guess so. So this, so what we can see now is the same as what we have, it happens before, so it is just coming back. And now this is a good reminder to us that if the people of Judah has been able to transform and they will be able, the remnants has been able to survive, we can as well. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, I will still continue here. So, so the story goes this, that you have the Judah, meaning that God's chosen people, there will be a judgment on them. But God is so just that he will not judge only his own. He will also judge those people out of his of his flock. So here God uses Assyria to, to bring judgment to Israel and to Judah. And after that, he also gives judgment on the oppressors. So the, the shaking will be whole. It is only a matter of timing. Okay. So God first takes care of his own and then the next one. Okay. God is just that he, as, as he chastises his own people, he will also pronounce judgment to his people's oppressors. Okay? Now, what were the characteristics of Assyria when dealing with God's people? Why does God uh, he use Assyria and then he still uh, pronounce judgment on them? So, because... They have a different motives on this case. So they decided to put this, there's a deception there. So 
first they form alliance with Judah and then eventually they, they come back. So they want to destroy us. So what is in their mind is always destruction instead of building up. So this is on Isaiah 10, 7 to 11. Arrogance instead of servitude. So it's the same. It's pride. So Judah, Israel has been subjected to pride. Outside also in Assyria, is also they are also arrogant. Okay. Now, if we look here, we can see as the paradox of the axe, saw, rod, and stuff. So this is about in uh, Isaiah 10, 15. This is talking about uh, is the axe is more is I, I will re I will read it to you. I think. Okay. Okay. This is Isaiah 10 to 15, 10, 15. But can the axe boast greater power than the person who uses it? So it is, it is still the one who uses the axe. Meaning, if God uses you, you cannot boast that you are the one. Whatever the result of that one, you cannot boast that it is yours. It is the one who has ordered you to do it. Okay? Is the saw greater than the person who saws? Can a rod strike unless a hand moves it? Can a wooden cane walk by itself? So it is coming back to the pride that we had. So whatever the outcome of uh, the result of our hands, the result of our hands, of our work, it is not coming from us. It is the one coming from the one who has ordered us to do so. Okay. Okay. Now, so we can say, okay, so the oppressor and the oppressed is being judged. So what's the difference? What's the point? So everybody has to be judged. So what could be the difference then? So where, where do we want to put ourselves in? Do we want to be part of the oppressed or do we want to be part of the oppressor? Okay. So what could be the difference here is that when we receive judgment, we become purified. We learn from, from those things. Okay. So it mentions about Isaiah 10, 20 to 23. It also talks about Revelation 21, 3 to 5 in here. Okay. And then the oppressor is destroyed. So there's a big difference here. Okay. So where do you want to put yourself in? It's up to you. Okay. Okay. So if you want to be purified, so let us take the judgment as is that is being uh, uh, given to us by God. Okay. Okay. And still here, there will be a hope for the Lord's people. Okay. So the promise was given to God's people who are fully committed to the covenant. So God has given us the covenant. We did not uh, take this covenant seriously. And then if we have to take this one, there is, this is the promise that he has given. So during the cleansing, and then we, have, we are now free. We are now ready to, to face God in this way. So I will read it to you on Isaiah 10, 20. In that day, the remnant left in Israel, the survivors in the house of Jacob will no longer depend on allies who seek to destroy them, but they will faithfully trust the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. So it is, there will be a shift. Instead of trusting what we have, the, the faith will be put in the Lord itself. Okay. Okay. And from this, we will have the redemption. This is through the promise of a Savior that will branch out from the line of David. This is mentioned in Isaiah 11, 1 to 2. It, is, it says that out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing the fruit from the old root. So this is the remnant. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Now, as uh, so I have gone through from Isaiah 7 to 12. So with this, I would like to give you the synthesis of the message that we have. First thing is on Isaiah 9. It says that God hates sin and will judge the evil doers. So God, is, God is, is just that he will not tolerate sin. So judgment has to come. And also God uses the judgment for his people to trust and depend on him. So when he gives the judgment, it draws us near to him that he will, uh, so we can 
change our trust from trusting ourselves to others and then trusting to God. And then God extends his grace to preserve his remnant for himself through his judgment. So this is the purification that comes through the judgment. And this will be a good one. God's anger will not last forever. So because of his love, his character, he is love, he cannot be always angry. So un until the time that he was, he was able to purify, then the grace becomes. God's remnant will find true joy in his salvation. So now I'm talking about, I, now you can sing the verses in Isaiah 12, 2 to 3. So, and then God's remnant will rejoice purely in him. So as I mentioned, so from God's anger will not last forever until we are rejoicing. Now is the time that we can sing Isaiah 12, 1 to 6. So from, from disaster, God will bring us through the fires. He will not leave us there. And then will bring us to the joy and the glory that is awaiting in Isaiah 12. So, remember, God is both judge and savior. Okay? The judgment of God declares what is broken. Okay? So he declares. So in, for us to understand that we have something to be, is to be uh, taken care of, we must know that is something, there is something wrong with us. So it is, God declares something is broken on us. So he will declare judgment. Okay? So if we read here on Re uh, Revelation 3.19, it says, I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. And also it mentions here on Hebrews 12.7, it says that as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Likewise, on, uh, on the way here, uh, I was, it comes to my mind also that was, it is mentioned in Psalms 119 and 7, so it is not on the slide. It says that my suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. So when the judgment comes, it, it points out what is wrong with us. But the, it does not stop there. There is a promise that the promise of God is to heal. It mentions here in Romans 8, 1 to 2. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So from judgment to healing. But uh, transformation takes time. It takes, it, gives, it takes pain, it takes sacrifice, mindset change. But it is worth the, save, the, the saving up of those things in anticipation of our change from glory to glory. Okay. So in closing, I would like to, uh, this also comes to my mind, uh, uh, impressed to me by God, uh, on this just this morning, so it is not on the slide. I would like to read to you. Is, I hope that this will be our prayer on the mor every morning that we come. I would like to read to you uh, Psalms 119. In uh, Psalms 119, verses 33 to 40. So let me read this to you as this is not on the, on the slide that we had. And verse 33, it says, Teach me your decrees, O Lord. I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding and I will obey your instructions. I will put them into practice with all my heart. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. Give me an eagerness for your laws rather than love for money. Turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. 
Reassure me of your promises made to those who fear you. Help me abandon my shameful ways for regulations are good. I long to obey your commandments. Renew my life with your goodness. With this, I would like to end the, the message that we have for today. And uh, I hope that this gives hope to us as we go through the time that we are in now. We have sufferings, we have uncertainties, we don't know what the future holds, or even we don't know what will happen tomorrow. But we know this, this happens before and we will be passing through to this in anticipation of the coming of the kingdom of God. And I, I believe that He will purify us, this uh, judgment, these testings that is happening to us, it already happened before. And we know that this will give us the purification and we, we will come up strong. As I would like to end as my message today in a, in a short prayer. Uh, let as I would like us to close our, head, our, our eyes and bow our heads for a short message, prayers that we have for today. Lord Jesus, thank you for the message that you have given us today. Let this be a message that will uh, bring us hope and be embedded in our hearts. And as the Holy Spirit teaches, let your words move from our mind to our hearts, then to the hands and feet, taking us beyond the education of these words that lead, will lead us to transformation. And as we represent as ambassadors of your kingdom, let these words be the guide and let your message and your and the words in, in the Bible be our light to guide our path. For as, as we know that we are uh, facing some difficulties, trials, and everything that is coming through, we know this is part of the purifications that you have intended for us, that we will come out victorious and part of the remnant that you have envisioned for us. And as we, we, I close this uh, message today, Lord, let these words be embedded that we can remember always when the time comes that we are facing difficulties, sufferings, and as we know that this will always be, these are temporary, and we will come out victorious. In Jesus' name, Amen. watching our online uh, Sunday celebration. Thank you for listening. This is the last uh, series of our uh, uh, Trustworthy series. And the main objective of this series is to, to know and understand that He is a trustworthy God. And He has remained faithful to His covenant. So today, Jojo discussed about the remnant, right? 
Sometimes when we are facing difficulties in life, we are sometimes God is using that to shake us, right? If our if we are holding uh, to this kind of object or or bank account or anything, because only God can preserve us. That's why God allow judgment, allow uh, testing and trials, so that your your uh, your your foundation will be strengthened. Amen. Because that's really important. Because, like what he said in in his word, right? Some people trust in chariots. Some people trust on kings, horses, right? But who are those uh, are, are, are mentioned that is blessed? Only those who trust God. So let me read this verse from uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Right? Sorry. He said, For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith, this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good, to do good works, which God prepared in advance as our way of life. Amen. So God is the one working. Amen. And He will use people, He will use like, like, for example, this pandemic, right? We are all shaken by this pandemic. Especially those that are really holding on wealth, holding on the things of this world, right? And we are, we are, we are restricted to come out. But I believe God has a purpose so we can seek Him more. Amen? And as this season of shaking trials and testing, our faith will be built. Amen? With, that, with the right foundation. And this foundation is no other than Christ. Amen? So, the last verse of this uh, uh, chapter, in verse 19, he said, Therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophet with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Amen? This is, this is where God is bringing us all. Not on the things of this world that can vanish, right? That can disappear. Only what Christ did on the cross. That's the only thing that we can hold and be established. And I believe it will not be shaken because He Himself is the cornerstone. In Him, the whole building is fitted together and grow into a holy temple in the Lord. In Him, you two are being built together into a dwelling place for God in His Spirit. Church, this season will, will pass. And I believe God secure us. From the very beginning of this year, He said, I will sustain you. Amen. As you remain in me, I will sustain you and protect you. As I sustained you last year of 2020, I will sustain you this year of 2021. We are in the middle of this year, but I believe most of the church experience the God that we trust, the God who promised this trustworthy God is able, right? Is able you enable uh, he is able to protect and sustain you and provide to provide for you in this year of 2021 so as we concluded trustworthy series church continue to trust god no matter what happened amen regardless of uncertainty you don't know what hap- what will happen next amen let me, let me uh, give you this uh, parted word. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Holy Spirit is with us. 
until the coming of Christ, He will be with us to sustain us no matter what happened. Amen? You are part of this remnant as you continue to trust our trustworthy God who is worthy, a covenant-keeping God. God bless you, church, and see you next week in our new series, right? Ephesians, we're talking about relationship, especially husband and wife, as a, a relationship of parents and children, the the uh, the servant and the master. God bless you, church. Be blessed and continue to be a blessing to other people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.